Hey, it's Pink Buddha here again with another episode of Force Fridays. And today we're going to dive deeper into macros. If you've missed the other ones in the whole series, you can click up here to get cut up, as well as the two previous ones that I did on macros, macros 101 and 201. So today's going to be 301. You guessed it. <laughs> So for this week's episode, I'm just going to focus on the XY pad. I was going to talk about the crossfader and the pad grid and the envelope follower too, but those are also such huge topics that I'm actually going to break that up and space it out for some of the other episodes. So stay tuned for those. Uh, let's pause here to talk about some pros and cons with regard to macros that I'm discovering in this process. Uh, one vague pro is that there is so much control. <laughs> In fact, you had knobs, the crossfader, the XY pad, this pad grid. So that's great. Lots of control. Now, some things that I feel like aren't really working that well. Uh, number one is that there's no sort of effects racks that you can put onto macros. You can always save a template, but um, it'd be really nice to be able to drop something in there. But it does make for a challenge. And that's because number two big problem that I have with regard to macros is that when you are recording into the arranger that it will not will not record any automation that you have going to effects on a submix or on the master channel which i think is a huge limitation because it makes for a much greater programming challenge when you're trying to set up the macros because now you need to put all the effects on the individual tracks sometimes you just want to have something like the beat repeat to go on everything that means you'd have to put a beat repeat, that XY thing, on every single track and map all of them. And that's just not the sort of thing you can set up easily on a template. How a template works best is when you have things set up on your sub mixes and on your master track. Effects are controls that you want to pretty much use as a standard on whatever you create. You can put the individual tracks in and just route them to the sub mixes with the effects already set up and ready to go with your macros. <laughs> but now you're not going to be able to record that into the Ranger. So oh, that just puts a big wrench into like what kind of strategy that you might use to set up macros and other things like that on the force. The other big con with regard to macros is that you can't set up any sort of external device to be able to control them. Like if you had, if you had something like this, which I love to use with the force, you can just plug it in through the USB to use these big fat pads, but these knobs then you can't set those up to control anything. So that's really frustrating. All right, besides that, let's dive in to talk about a couple of these different things. Let's start with the XY pad. The XY pad, I love it. It's got a tremendous amount of control. So let me record a quick beat and tune here that we can play with. Okay, I have an XY pad here on the macros. This is not the XY pad that you click here. This is on the macros. And let me show you what I did with that. So one of the things that I wanted it to do, because I want to record this stuff into the arranger, is I had to go through and set up an XY pad on each one of the tracks. So to do that, I went to XY pad, I clicked here on track and I inserted that. Well, it's not giving me the option here. I have another dummy track here I can use to show you. Actually, just, just set up another one to show how that work. I put a drum track here. Is that when you get to the XY pad and you would need to do insert this onto this individual track. So I would click on insert. I could pick whatever one that I wanted to, and now that's going to insert that on the individual tracks. 
If I go to Mixer, you can see that. It's got an XY pad here. Actually, I put it on a couple different ones. I don't need these tracks right now, so I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And um, I set up the XY pad on this bass line and the drums, both of them, to be the beat repeat. So, in order to control both of them at the same time, I had to go into the macros and then choose the x-axis initially. I had to go to learn, go over to each individual track, click on the enable to turn it on, and then click on the x-axis, and then go over to the baseline one. Also, click on the x-axis and move that so that I come back here to the macros. And now, on both the x and y up here, it would be mapping to the x, y on the individual tracks. That sounds like a lot of work. It is. And this goes back to my major frustration, which is the arranger is not going to record any automation. I would much prefer just to put the XY pad on a submix or on the master track, route everything there, put it on once, and then just control it by the regular XY pad. Or one mapping from the macros to the master track where it has the XY pad. And I just do that once and I save it as a template. And any sort of tracks I put in, I just route there and it automatically works. With this method, if I delete something off this individual track, it's going to delete the connection the macro has, which means you have to program it all over again. <sighs> I'm quite frustrated by this, if you haven't noticed. The one advantage with using the macros on here is that you can have multiple things that are controlled at the same time. And I did this tape stop on here. I just said basically screw it with regard to like whether or not the arranger would record that or not. I went to the master tracks and on the submix number one I included an XY pad here that was just the tape stop. And so when I went into my when I went into my macros here and I set up the XY pad, I went to columns, and on this first column I mapped to the XY pad on the submix so that I could control the tape stop on here. So now what's happening is that I can use the XY pad to control the beat repeat on tracks one and on tracks three from these parts of the XY pad. And then on this one here in this column, I can do a tape stop. Let me show you how that sounds. So to summarize, I think the XY pad has a tremendous amount of potential to it. It's a little bit of a beast to program. You're going to have to memorize what you programmed it to do, and especially if you consider there's four XY pads and macros. I mean, God, that is a lot of control. I really can't see myself going through and programming four different ones with all sorts of different nuances and trying to remember what that would be, unless... Again, it's going to be on something that's on the master track or it's on the submixes, and it's going to be the same for every single four session and I just come to memorize it. That would, that would work great, but you're not going to be able to record it. So anyways, that concludes today's Force Friday talking about the XY pad. Next week, we're going to talk about the crossfader on here and then the pad grid and then the envelope follower. Like I said, there are so many different versions for this because it's... There's a lot to cover. I was originally going to put them all together, but I think it's better if I spread them out a little bit.